Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number four. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, uh, in this video, we're going to on the number formatting tab. We're going to talk about number formatting. Now, number formatting uh, on the home ribbon, there's a grouping over here. We'll also see the, sh the keyboard shortcut to jump if you click on this dialog launcher. The dialog launcher for the format cells dialog box, and we'll see how to use this later. I'm going to click cancel. All right, so number formatting. I always have notes somewhere in these workbooks also. Let's just talk about uh, some numbers here. We typed them into the cells. Now, I'm going to highlight all three of these using my selection cursor. And I'm going to come up to the number group, and there's accounting, percentage, comma, and then this increases decimals and this decreases decimals. Now, these are fine, but these give these are only, you know, five options of thousands of different types of number forming. But let's just see what happens if I apply accounting. Now, just notice one there's a one, a two, and a five there. There's a bunch of extra decimals. Let's just watch what happens when I click account, accounting. Now, accounting you immediately see that there is a big difference. It makes it look like there's $4.13 there. But look up in the formula bar. You could see, in fact, that it's not. That extra half a penny is still in the cell. Any subsequent calculation that looks at this cell is not looking at 413. It's looking at the underlying number. And that's one of the bigger mistakes in, in people make in Excel. When you, you apply some sort of number formatting, it doesn't round it. It just makes it look like it's rounding. That's why you think of number formatting as a facade. It sits on top. It's like the paint on the outside of the house. It's like a Halloween mask, right? You put a scary mask on, but underneath you're really a nice person. This looks like the scary mask 413, but under, underneath it's an unrounded number. Now, in this class, it, it doesn't really matter so much. In business, if you're doing invoicing or payroll, it matters a lot. All right. Basically, it doesn't matter as much in this class because when we do inferential statistics, it means we're estimating what we think will happen in the future. And if we're a few pennies off, it doesn't matter much. But look look at here. I'm going to click here. That number underneath is just totally different. All right, accounting. Let's uh, click down here, and I'm going to apply currency. Now, you can come up to this list. This is actually kind of nice here. It's got currency, accounting, short date, long date, all sorts of things. I'm going to click on currency. The difference between currency and accounting, this is called a floating dollar sign. This is called fixed on the outside. One thing that's nice about accounting is the decimals always line up, line up perfectly, whether there's negative or positive numbers. Sometimes for currency, it doesn't work that way. A kind of in-between number that people like to use, or in-between number format, is called comma. Now, you can get it right here. And if you read the screen tip, it says, this is accounting without the dollar sign. And people like this because they it lines up the decimals uh, perfectly. But again, don't forget, this is a facade, right? There is the actual number. Now, that's number formatting. Now, we want to talk of number formatting for uh, dollar amounts, right? But now we want to talk about what we're going to do mostly in this class. We're going to, we want to uh, talk about percentage number format, and then we want to talk about proportions, probabilities, uh, and percentages. Now, let's just start this off and remind ourselves how we go from a number to a percentage. We learned this in you know fifth or sixth grade or business math in college or something like that. This is the two steps you learn, right? You take some number like 0 0.03. This means out of every hundred, give me three. So if it's a tax, we take three pennies out of your hundred pennies. In the olden days, it was give me three sheep out of the hundred sheep, right? But 0 0.03 is kind of a, a hard number to visually interpret sometimes. So they invented percentage number format it to make it easier. Now here's the steps. You take this, you multiply it by 100. You get a 3, and then you slap on the symbol percent. Now this makes this a symbolic, rep a symbolic representation of that number. It is not the number 3. Understanding that will help you avoid problems with percentage percentage number formatting in Excel. All right, it's this step that people usually get messed up on. Because once you multiply 
0.03 times 100, you get 3. 3 is not equal to 0 0.03. That's what causes most people trouble. So for example, they come over here in, in a cell and they type 3 thinking, oh yeah, it'll know to add the correct percentage format. So I'm going to come up here. I'm actually going to click the drop down. And you can already see me, it's giving me a uh, preview here. Three, well, Excel knows this process, so it took three times 100, which is 300, and added percent symbol. Now let's try it this way. I'm going to type 0 0.03 in the cell, and then I'm going to apply the percentage number format. You can see that preview right there. So you want to make sure you understand what a percentage is. Whoa, the, the formatting just went away there. What a percentage is, how we calculate it, and how to apply percentage number format because like an, an amazing amount of what we do in this class are either percentages, proportions, or probabilities. My formatting is messing up here. This is something in my uh, Windows 7 Office 2010 operating system. Now I want to look at four other situations with percentages. Now uh, these two examples right here, I actually want to pre-format, and sometimes that's pretty convenient because we'll see that it helps us avoid the error of the 3 and the 0 .03. So I'm going to highlight these two cells and pre-format. Now the problem with this, and I'll show you in just a second, is that adds percentage number format with no decimal showing. So I like to come up here. All right, so now I have that. And watch this. When I type a 3, the percentage symbol automatically pops up visually telling you this is pre-formatted. So when I hit enter, it's entered correctly as 3%. Underneath, there still is 0 0.03. On top, we see the formatted symbolic representation of that number 0 0.03. But watch this. If it's pre-formatted, it's like either way you do it, you'll get the right answer. So notice I type 0 0.03. It doesn't pop up, but when I hit enter, it shows up as uh, 3%. Just to prove to you that we typed in 3 here and 0 0.03 here, if I highlight both of these cells and I want to wipe away the number formatting to see what's really in the cell, what really got entered, because remember we typed a 3 here. You can come up, and this is a great trick when you get into trouble with number formatting, just apply general and it wipes all the number formatting away. So I'm going to click this and sure enough you could see it's 0 0.03 in both cases, even though I typed a 3 there. I'm going to click undo, and I do want, I'm going to undo up here or control Z, and I do want you to, to show you over here, and I know when you're doing invoicing and payroll, number formatting really can get in the way sometimes. So if you want to just see what's really in the cell, just come up and apply your general, and sure enough, boom. So it, that number really is still 4.125. I'm going to control Z. All right. Now there's another way to do this and in this class if you have a, you know, one or two problems where you don't want to pre-format or you don't want to come up here and click the button, you can actually format as you type. Watch 3.00 percentage symbol, right? So that cell was not formatted, but because I typed that percentage sign, I'm formatting as I type. And the last example is the the old similar to typing a 3 in. People then apply the formatting and they get all confused. Here they have their correct tax rate. It's 0 0.025 or this is a, a, pro a probability or a percentage, right? And they come up and they use this button. I never use this button because I don't like it. What is it going to do? It doesn't have any decimals. It makes it look like it's 3%. So what happens is people freak out and go, oh, it's 3%. That's not the tax rate. If you look up in the formula bar, you can see it's really 2.5. So how do we fix this? These buttons right here, increase decimals. Better yet, don't use this button. Just use the one right there. Another way to do this, I'm going to control shift. I'm going to apply, uh, sorry, I'm going to apply general. So another way to do this is there's a keyboard shortcut right here. And this keyboard shortcut opens up the dialog box for format cell. So I'm going to use control one. If you go down to percentage, then you have as much freedom. And in this class, you definitely in cer some circumstances, you want to show five des four or five decimal position. So this option here gives you the most freedom. So 
Format Cells, Number Tab, Percentage, Formatting. All right, a couple um, uh, important things left, talking about proportions and probabilities without percentages, uh, number format. Here's the situation. We have percentage with no decimals um, showing. And I again, I don't want this. For whatever reason, I accidentally formatted it. So I'm simply going to come up to General. So I can do that and apply General, or I'm going to undo Control-Z, or I can simply increase the decimals, right? percentage with two decimals, right? Um, if I want to wipe this away totally, I can come up here and use general. Now there is a keyboard shortcut in this class. That we maybe don't get to use it too much, but uh, keyboard for And where is the tilde key? It's the tilde or the grave accent. It's to the left of the number one. So Control Shift tilde. So Control Shift tilde just wipes all the number formatting away. Okay. Here we have it looks like um, 0 0.01. So later in this class we'll calculate probabilities, and there'll be lots of decimals. What's happened here is someone has decreased the decimals to two. So we could see up in the formula bar there's a lot more decimals, and I really want to see those. So I'm going to just increase the decimals. Okay. Here's no decimals. It looks like there's a zero in the cell, but you can sure as uh, for sure see that it's 0.49. So again, I'm going to increase the decimal. Last two things for this video. The proportion of students in the past who received a 3.0. So later in chapter 4 and going forward, we'll talk about probabilities. Well, if we, we know that uh, out of all the times we've taught a particular cl class, so we have all of them, uh, 1,255, 42 people got 3.0. Well, we can calculate the proportion of students in the past that got a 3.0. So I'm going to equal sign, click on that cell, division, forward slash, and click on this. So we have some past data, empirical data we have. some, And we're saying, OK, well, in the past, 0.033466614 of the students uh, got a 3.0. Now, let's look at a slightly different example. This was all of the um, past exams. This one's based on last quarter's class. Uh, we want to calculate the probability that you get a 3.0. So you, you know, happen to have this information. You know, four students got a 3.0 out of 32 in the very last class. Now this time, you, you want to use this information to predict what the chances are that you'll get a 3.0. So here, uh, probability, we're looking at past data. But because we're going to use it to estimate our chances, uh, we're going to call it a probability. And actually, this is inferential statistics, right? We're using past data to uh, predict the future. Can we, if we have this probability, does that mean this is the chances? No. This is just our best way of guessing, right? Uh, because the future is always unknown, we may think using statistics that we can estimate with some precision. And sometimes you can be somewhat precise, but it's never for sure. All right, uh, those were doing formulas where we show decimals, a proportion, a probability. You certainly could then apply a number format. So I'm going to apply this one right here. Notice I'm selecting percentage with no decimals. Looks like 3 and 13. Just don't forget. Those unrounded numbers are still in the cell. Um, let's do this. Equals, um, oh, well, no. I was, uh, let's just, I'll, I'll show you how you, another way to know. Because you, we saw the number there, and then we applied the number form. And here's another way to know. You take 100 times this. Now, if that really is 3%, which means 0 0.03. Then when we do a calculation like this, we should get $3. When I hit Enter, we don't. So that's an example where the formula, and all this is true about all formulas. Formulas do not look at the thing on top, the facade or the Halloween mask. It's always looking underneath at the unrounded number. All right. 
All right, so that's a little bit about number formatting. When we come back, we'll uh, our next video, we'll talk about data sets and then data analysis like pivot tables and sorting. All right, see you next video.